information which will protect the residents in the area um, from, from uh, any developments that doesn't kind of coincide with what we're asking for. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do 
Um, there is a bit that gables quite high and the rear door just extends straight up from the rear elevation. The intention now is to remove part of the hit to gable <coughs> on the corner, which will then see the rear door set in from the rear and there will be a side door that in appearance from the side. It's important to state that the majority of the rear door that as it is constructed on the site has got planning permission under the previous refusal. Uh, approval, sorry. It's considered that the amendments shown on these submitted plans do show an improvement in the appearance of the rear dormer, and on this basis it's recommended for approval. There is a qualified petition.
to just see that we've acted in good faith throughout and understand the position. In May 2015, a funding application was made for a single story of extension, a porch, and a lock conversion. The original design was not acceptable for funding officer, but the discussion with our architect of variations approved. However, before the amended plan could be approved, the planning officer insisted that all plans related to the side design on the door be removed from the plans, as the apology apparently was not approved. She further advised in writing that this should and could go under the committee's development. Summarising we had planning permission for a large flat roof to be a dormer, which had been objected to much in that pre previous uh, submission, uh, with three windows, a real a single story extension and a porch. The only uncertainty was the side dormer. And with hindsight, doing them with the development was not helpful. When we came to the side dormer, we took advice from builders and specialist rural folks and lock converters who consulted the National Planning Board. We decided that a neat and strong solution was to prevent was to convert and hit the cable under the rules of limited development. In July, only July 2013, we received a letter from the planning authorities saying they understood that we might be in breach of our funding. When the officer came on site, she actually did say to us that they'd received um, the issue being raised by the neighbours in April. We didn't know we hadn't been informed by the planning officer. Two days later, after the site visit, we received a letter saying that our work on the side of the house did not comply with permitted development, quoting the regulation that the edge of the enlargement, closest to the eaves of the original roof, shall so far as practical be no less than 20 centimetres from the eaves of the original roof. Actually, this is only a partial quotation of permitted development regulations, which reads, other than in the case of a hit to cable with enlargement, the edge of it continues. That's what we've done. We've, we've done a hit to cable with conversion under permitted development in that place we're working at. We were then advised as we comply to submit a retrospective planning permission to resolve the issue. This we did, and as you've heard, with a summary of this. The irony is that we now understand that we've just gone ahead with a hit to cable conversion and lock conversion because of permitted development and then applied later for the extension. By doing it all together, we have been disadvantaged. Anyway, our architects have now discussed the areas of concern, redone the design to comply with full planning compliance. It goes back to a hit roof format. It's expensive, will bring this nightmare for us to an end, and allow my widowed daughter and her children to enjoy their new home and work. We've got three objections. One is essentially objecting to the original granted planning permission, and the third part of that just now. The second is complaining about privacy, that there are no new windows in the existing or indeed the revised site construction whatsoever. And the third essentially wants us to construct a site format which looks done the done the design. The petition raises no funding issue whatsoever, it's recognisable and applied by many people who live some distance away. On the other hand, our two neighbours are at the offices, might be done construction and support the amendments, and most importantly, the elderly gentleman in the other part of the assembly is also happy with the current amended design. We've tried throughout to work to the book, do it properly. We were happy to, to uh, well not happy, but we will happily do the uh, reconversion at great expense to bring it into line, but we have acted in good faith throughout to try and do things properly. We have been badly advised and we can do the changes uh, as, as appropriate. I hope we will take the officer's recommendation to approve this revision to bring this matter to a reasonably happy conclusion because we want to comply. Some of the works 
for example, who to gave or could have been done under permitted development had the applicant not gone around it a different way. So by doing certain elements of the work first, they no longer have benefit of the permitted development, so, so that permitted development didn't apply. A, a, a planning approval was granted Um, for a, a door across the, uh, the rear of the site together with um, some extension.